Yeah, so an LB30, which is the Lend Lease version of the B24, the early B24. So this one served with the RAF, uh, 120 Squadron of Coastal Command, and then 154 Squadron of uh, Bomber Command in India. And then after that, she was turned into a cargo plane. So we have, we're having to take all of her civilian parts out and before we can really get started on it. Well, this is a rough draft of the instrument panel. And uh, based on, so we've yet to get a full set of blueprints for the B-24. So we have to work off what we can get off the manuals. And we know the sizes of the gauges, so from there we can put together a rough draft. Um, these three castings here are for the Kramer seats. Uh, there's one for the bombardier, one for the navigator, and one for the radio operator. And so we have a full set of three now. Uh, over here, underneath, underneath the bag, these are seat belt brackets. And so these have been painted, these have to be cleaned. But um, they'll go on plates. And this is this is an original plate here, but and it mounts, uh, mounts like that. pieces at the top, that's what the bomb racks attach to. These all are silver cad, and which is, it's very hard to find places that'll fit that anymore because it's, you know, it's cad. Um, the, this, so this is an A-17 type fire extinguisher, which was a, an early variant, early war variant extinguisher. And, it took a lot of work to get this one, but this one's fully restored, and I'm still working on this one. And so uh, one of the things that I brought up with me is I had to recreate this little cigar band. And so recreating the artwork. And so the next step will be to, to wrap it around and put the clamp on it. This is called the APU. That's the auxiliary power unit. And so it's, it's a generator so that you can run the electrics on the airplane without starting the engines. And uh, APUs, there's one used for tanks and there's one used for Navy Beachmasters that both look a lot like those used by the Army and but you know, the Army Air Corps. But this is the correct one for the B-17. And we found it in Minnesota. And so we haven't restored it yet, but... Um, it is in really good shape. It's a common wartime primer. Uh, the zinc is naturally resistant to corrosion. And uh, Douglas had this tendency so where they wouldn't spray so it. They you're looking back so it has this unusual, so we, we replicate that. It has an unusual finish. So the back of the lane, uh, the toilet would be in here. If the plane had a toilet on board. But it's, it's the tail wheel. So these are tail wheel assemblies. Um, we have some more here behind you. And then the mounts that they go into. That's our, that's our cockpit door. And the, uh, the upper chart is the fuel system. And the chart underneath it 
is a, um, it's a system diagram. It, it lists all the blueprint numbers that apply to your serial number. A pilot seat from the B-17. We have a good friend of ours named Greg in California who's bringing us the other one. So, uh, yeah, seat cushions. Uh, um, <laughs> these were made for us um, as a thank you for working on Memphis Bell. The bottom pieces and the back pad. So, so like that. It's a it's a fibrous material similar to cotton, but it's really soft. And um, the reason it's so wild is it's hollow. It's got hollow fibers. And um, so it's a common material in life preservers because it floats. And it also retains heat. So the B-17, the standard B-17, came with uh, four first aid kits three of this type here and one of these. Now this is an army issue kit and this is an early pattern and we partnered with the Air Force Museum to have these recreated because the obviously you don't want to damage an original but we did refill them but um, the bullard can there that is all original and that took some time to find its original contents. This is uh, in the waste compartment. It's mounted on the wall near the ball tray. And so if you open it up, so there's the kit, and you can unroll it, and there's all the contents. As far as I am aware, there are only two fully complete functional C1 autopilots in the world. One in France, one in Australia. So we want to bring it to the United States and certainly put it in the airplane. Uh, so this is the control panel. It came from the gentleman in Australia. Super awesome guy. We even have footage of it hooked to his system so we know it works. And so what it does is you turn that on, and I'm going to explain how the autopilot works here. But you turn it on, and this activates a gyro which is located in the airplane's center of gravity. Which, by the way, this was pulled off a combat veteran in Belgium. So it, it didn't need a restoration, it's fine. But this gyro feeds this information here to, as an amplifier, which is connected to these three servos. And you have each servo, the cables on the airplane are run through because one acts for pitch, roll, and yaw. So they tug on the cables to hold the airplane level. Now that in and of itself is awesome but it gets better. See, the bomb sight is also sitting on another gyro. And so whatever the bomb sight is aimed at, that gyro will turn the airplane in that direction. So when the bomb sight calculates you're in the right spot to hit what you're aiming at, it will automatically drop the bombs. Now, our bomb sight is in storage. It's new old stock, but we're holding on. We don't have it on display yet because the only piece of the autopilot we don't have is the stabilizer with the gyro in it that the bomb site is attached to. If we had that, then we'll have everything we need to restore the autopilot. Connects. So, so over here, you'll have an extension that hooks to that. Now that we've finished the bomb bay and the aft fuselage of Liberty Bell, uh, we started on the ab fuselage of this B-17, which does not have a name, uh, but she was recovered from Canada, uh, Labrador, Canada, pulled from a place called Lake Dyke. And so, um, just like on Lucky 13, we're starting in, on Station 11 here in the back and working our way forward. And uh, since we're not having to work to anybody else's work, we can do everything two at a time. One for Lucky 13, one for the Lake Dyke plane. 